Hello guys and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I managed to score more than 950 points in my comp exam simulation. This is round one. So the first step that you normally have to look at is your report to see what are the customers buying criteria, what do the customers really want in your market. So we'll start with thrift market segment. So in thrift market segment, here customers want a product with a Pricing has an importance of 55%. Reliability has an importance of 20%. Uh, positioning has an importance of 15%. Age has an importance of 10%. So if you scroll down to the core market segment, here pricing has an importance of 46%. Age has an importance of 20%. Reliability has an importance of 18%. Ideal positioning has an importance of 16%. Then in the nano market segment, here ideal positioning has an importance of 35%. Pricing has an importance of 27%. Age has an importance of 20%. Reliability has an importance of 18%. Then in the elite market segment, age has an importance of 34%. Pricing has an importance of 24%. Ideal positioning has an importance of uh, 22% and reliability has an importance of 20%. So let, let us make the decisions in uh, my simulation. So for ECA, so ECA is in the Elite Market segment. So here I'll give it 12.2. Uh, so I'll say 12.2. Then the size, I'll give it uh, 6.2 also. So I'll give it 6.2. I'll not I'll not touch my mean time before failure. So for Adam, Adam is in the elite market segment. So I'll give it a performance of 14.2. A size of 8.1. And... Uh, not uh, again here. I'll not touch my mean time before failure. Then for arc product, I'll give it a performance of six point seven, a size of thirteen point six, and uh, again here I'll not touch my reliability also because I want my product to be more reliable than those of my competitors. So in the able, this is the core market segment. I'll give it a performance of nine point four. And a size of uh, 10.8. And uh, please don't copy my research and development values because uh, they're not, they might not be the same as yours. I'm just giving you a direction on how you can do it. So I'll recalculate. And uh, if you look at it, is that uh, most of my products are coming out in September. So I'll have to, uh, again here my, with my strategy, I want to introduce uh, three new products. So let me say I'll introduce the first product is uh, ARC. So I'll give it uh, ARC uh, 1. So because I want it to be, to sell uh, in the thrift market segment. Then uh, again, another one I want it to sell in the core market segment. I'll give it, uh, I'll name it Ebol 1. Then uh, this other product that I wanted to sell in the nano market segment, I'll call it uh, ARC1. So it's uh, ARC1. I'm just uh, giving the same uh, name as those of uh, the other products, but I'm adding one so that you don't confuse. Then uh, finally, I'll give it, uh, I'll call it Adam1 because I want it to sell in the Elite market segment. So in terms of pricing, so in terms of mean time before failure, so this is in the thrift. So I'll give it uh, twenty thousand. In the co, I'll give it twenty two thousand. In the nano, I'll give it twenty four thousand. Then in the elite, I'll give it twenty six thousand. Then in terms of uh, positioning, so this one I'll say it's a uh, 15.4. See, this is in the Elite. So 15.4 and uh, 
7.0. Then uh, in the nano market segment, I'll say it, I'll give it this 13.3 because I want my products to be more competitive than those of my competitors. So here is 5.0. Then in the core market segment, so sorry, this is 5, not 0. So this is 5.0. So in the nano market segment, here I'll uh, no, this is in the core, sorry. So this is, uh, I'll give it 10.1. And also I'll give it 10.1. Uh, then in the thrift market segment, I'll say 7.0 and uh, a size of 13.2. So I'll give it 13.2. So I'll recalculate to see when my products will be coming out. So all uh, these other products are coming out in October. Then uh, the new products in the thrift is coming out in May, April. This is in the round three. So I'll start selling this product in round three. So that's my decisions in terms of research and development. So my next step is uh, because I want to reduce on my R&D cycle time and uh, reduce on my costs and uh, material cost and uh, these other costs, I'll come into my total quality management so here are just initiatives that will try and help you reduce on uh, the R&D cycle time and also reduce on your labor cost and uh, what have you. So I'll invest uh, 1 million. So I'm trying to reduce, these are initiatives like if you click on this information button, this one will uh, reduce, labor, labor, reduce labor and material cost. Then benchmarking will uh, reduce administrative costs. So... What I'll do, I'll just put a thousand on each. So this is one million, not basically one thousand. So I'll put one thousand here. One thousand. So I'll put one thousand on all of them. Then I recalculate. So I'll go back to my R&D to see what's, uh, how is my R&D faring on. So here I have my, they are coming out in September. You see that uh, it has changed. They are coming out in October, but now they have been pushed back. So the cycle time has been reduced to September. So the next uh, decision is the marketing page. So under the marketing page, here is where you normally make decisions in terms of pricing, in terms of uh, promo budget, sales budget, and uh, forecasting. So your promo budget will increase your awareness. Your sales budget will increase your accessibility. Then also you'll be pricing your product so that you can make sales into the market. So this, uh, the nano product and the Elite product are not change anything. So I'll come to so before, before I change that, so I'll have to check on my report. So this is my report. So in terms of pricing, so we'll start with thrift. In terms of pricing, pricing has an importance of 55%, meaning the th these uh, customers in the thrift market, they really value pricing of their commodities. So if you look at my how we sold in the last round, I had the highest price of 26, and uh, I lost down on most of... Uh, my customers because of my pricing. So with the thrift, I'll have to reduce on my pricing. Then in the core market segment, also price is important with than 46%. Then in terms of uh, selling, you see mine was 32, which was the highest. And uh, I maybe if I could have reduced it, uh, I could have made more sales. Then in the nano market segment, here pricing has an importance of 27%. And... Uh, my competitors had 37, I had 40. Then in the Elite market segment, here, pricing has an importance of 24%. So I'll just come, I'll only reduce the ones for core and uh, thrift. So this one, I'll give it 20. Then uh, this one, I'll give it uh, 29. Then I'll give it a promo budget of 2,000 because I want to increase on my access awareness so that more customers can be aware of my product 
So that's the importance of investing in the promo budget. Then in the sales budget, it's increase your accessibility such that more customers can easily access on your product. So this is in terms of salesperson, uh, branches, and what have you. Then the next place is the forecasting. And with the forecasting, I normally, what I did is that I carried out my forecasting and I saw that I can sell uh, 2,000 in, no, no, in, okay, in the thrift, I'll sell uh, 2,000. Then in the co market segment, I'll sell uh, 2,100. Then in the thrift market segment, no, in the nano market segment, I'll sell 1,000. Uh, 1,199. 1, oh, so basically 1,200. So in terms of, so 1,200. Then here I can sell 1,300. Then I'll come and calculate because uh, this is my marketing department and uh, I just have to make uh, focus the number of units that I'll sell in the coming years. So in terms of uh, marketing, that's uh, the decisions that I did for marketing. Then we have production. So here is where you want to set up your company in terms of automation and uh, buying sell capacity. So here you just have to, for the new product, this is the first step, just buy the capacity so that you build on what you'll sell in the next round. So I'm building a capacity of 300. Then uh, automation, I'll, I'm giving all of them uh, four because uh, I want them, I want to automate my company and reduce on labor costs. So I'll give it an automation of four. So, so Okay, the basically why I started doing automation is that here we have this maximum investment and you just have to play with this value so that you don't invest more with the, what you have. Then because the thrift customers in the thrift market segment really want cheaper product, so I'll have to automate my machines. So I'll give it automation of 8.5, meaning 85% of my machines are automated. Same with the uh, core, so with core I'll give it uh, 7, so let us uh, calculate to see how much you'll have uh, spent and how much you'll have uh, remained with, so that if you have any value that you have, you can still uh, invest on other places. So I can see we still have uh, some money here, so I'll buy a capacity of 100 here. So here I'll also I'll buy a capacity of 100. Here I'll buy a capacity of 100. Here I'll buy a capacity of 100. So I'll calculate. Because I want to increase on my capacities before I go in the production schedule to see how I'll... Uh, so this is 59, so it's uh, almost perfect. So here I'll come and produce... Uh, 860 units, so 860. Mm. So let me say, yeah, 860. Here I'll come and produce uh, 960. So let me just say, here I'll come and produce 1000. I'll produce 1100 units. Also, here I'll come and produce uh, 1960 units. 960 units. Here I'll, I'll produce 1,250 units and uh, here I'll produce uh, 2,050, so 2,050 units and uh, note that, so yeah, 2,050 units and you should note that um, in, this, uh, in this simulation I can't uh, produce this new product because I don't have the capacity, that's why I built my capacity in this round so that I can be able to sell them in the next round. So the next step is human resource. This is where you, in terms of uh, your workers and uh, your productivity index, your salary, so your training hours. So my recruitment spend, I normally give it uh, 5,000, but you can give it 3,040, but me, I normally go for maximum. So 5,080. So my training hours have... Uh, given them a maximum training hours of 80 because I want to increase on my productivity. 
So before you go into the last part, which is the finance, it's advisable that you go into the income statement in the performance. So you look at the income statement. You see you are getting loss in this new product because uh, you are investing, you are putting more money and they are not getting back on your return. So we are just uh, developing, so no need to worry. Then in terms of uh, ratios, here with ratios, also cash flow, we are using more money than what is coming in, so we don't need to worry. So balance scorecard, let's look at our projected uh, balance scorecard in, uh, for the decisions that you have made. Here we have uh, 60.5, so this is 60.5, sorry. So next, what we'll do is that we come into the finance section here. So let us, uh, because we are projecting to have 536, so I'll take uh, this maximum, so it's 14,722. Then I'll take here 15,000. Then I'll issue stock worth uh, 10,000. So I'll recalculate to see if uh, I have enough money for my projected cash flow. So no, for my cash position in uh, as of December. So let me see what I have. So my projected cash position is uh, 37. So let me look at my balance scorecard to see if uh, I've improved on my projected balance scorecard. My balance scorecard is, uh, you see that I got uh, profits. I don't have profit because I'm using more of my money in uh, developing my company. So my projected balance scorecard is 66.2 and I believe um, I'll be improving as the rounds go by. So that's it for today, guys. If you feel you have any questions, just... Uh, Send me an email that is on your screen and for sure I'll uh, try and assist you. Have a nice time.